So many terrible ideas are being proposed in Florida and so many bad laws are being passed that it's almost impossible to keep up on a daily basis. Ron DeSantis is destroying the state of Florida, all in an effort to presumably prove to the Republican Party's far right base that he's the most extreme politician in the country and you should vote for him in 2024 over Donald Trump. Now, regardless if that strategy pays off or not for him, he is literally destroying the lives of millions of people that live in that state. Now, on Thursday evening, he announced that he signed the Heartbeat Protection Act into law, and he doesn't tell you specifically what this does, but this is a near total abortion ban that prohibits all abortions after six weeks. Now, Florida's existing abortion law was already fairly draconian. One woman literally almost died because she was forced to give birth to a non-viable fetus. But now, in order to legally obtain an abortion in Florida, you basically need to seek out an abortion before you even know that you're pregnant which effectively makes this a total abortion ban. But what about the victims of rape or incest? Well, don't you worry because the reasonable Republicans in Florida were gracious enough to include exceptions. And here's what those exceptions are. As People Magazine explains, on Thursday, DeSantis announced that he signed the Heartbeat Protection Act into law, which will now require a woman to provide proof that the pregnancy was a result of rape, incest, or human trafficking in order to receive an abortion up until 15 weeks of gestation. Now, before we've talked about how states with exceptions for instances of rape or to save the life of the mother, they actually aren't very good because usually these laws are written in very vague ways so as to not give doctors enough confidence that they won't be prosecuted if they perform the abortion that is technically legal, right? But in this instance here, what actually counts as proof of rape? Well, it can be medical records, restraining orders, or police reports, but what if you don't have that, as is the case in many uh, instances of rape? Too bad, you will be forced to have your rapist's baby. And even if you do have proof, well, you better present it within the first 15 weeks of your pregnancy, otherwise you're still screwed. How merciful of the Florida Republican Party. Now, I need to remind you that Florida already had a relatively strict abortion law on the books. Again, it almost killed people. That's how restrictive it was. And 75% of Floridians, including 61% of Republicans even, opposed a six-week abortion ban, according to a poll by the University of uh, North Florida. But Ron DeSantis, he didn't care. He doesn't care about what the people want. It's all about him and virtue signaling to the GOP's far-right national base, all about getting him through a GOP primary. But it gets even worse because Florida has also led the way when it comes to anti-LGBTQ plus extremism, and it started out with their notoriously homophobic don't say gay law, and they also recently banned life-saving gender-affirming care for trans youth, and it's gotten so bad that the state's largest queer civil rights organization has issued a travel advisory instructing people to avoid the state if they can, if they happen to be queer. As ABC News reports, Equality Florida says the advisory issued Wednesday was prompted by the passage of laws that are hostile to the LGBTQ community, restrict access to reproductive health care, repeal gun safety laws, foment racial prejudice, and attack public education by banning books and censoring curriculum. The organization is urging families to consider relocation, asking students to reconsider attending colleges and universities in the state, and recommending that conference and event hosts relocate out of the state. Now, this advisory comes as a majority of queer parents are currently considering leaving the state over anti-LGBTQ plus policies, and in response to news that queer people are basically being forced to flee the state because it's become so hostile towards queer people, well, Ron DeSantis's press secretary, Christine Christina Pushaw publicly encouraged this by tweeting a hand-waving emoji in response to a survey that confirms that queer families are indeed fleeing the state as a result of anti-LGBTQ plus extremism. So this is who we're dealing with here. In response to news that their policies are forcing people out of their own state, what are they saying? Bye. Sorry, they're not rethinking their extremism. They're not thinking maybe we're going too far and Florida really is a state that welcomes everyone, even folks who have lifestyles that we disagree with. No, they're not even saying that anymore. They're saying, adios, if you don't like it, too bad. The goal is to get them to flee the state. That's what we're dealing with. But as horrifyingly extreme as that sounds, forcing LGBTQ plus families to flee the state is actually a more compassionate response 
by the Florida Republican Party, considering that legal experts now believe that Florida may be laying the legal groundwork to execute LGBTQ plus people, literally. Henry Guardiana of Into explains, Florida has somehow become an even more lethal place to live for queer and trans Americans thanks to the passage of two new bills. The first, SB 1342, stipulates that sexual child abuse and acts of pedophilia may be punishable by the death penalty. The second bill would make it easier for a jury to send the accused to the gallows. According to Reuters, the bill allows juries to recommend the death penalty in capital cases on an 8-4 to four vote instead of a unanimous vote. Now, what does this have to do with queer people? Well, if you've been paying attention to what's been going on in Florida this year, you'll know that Ron DeSantis is trying his best to have queer and trans citizens as well as their allies labeled as child abusers for simply helping trans kids get access to gender affirming health care. And now in Missouri, the nation's first ban on trans health care for adults has passed. Naturally, the idea that conservatives could be well within their legal right to label queer people pedophiles and then advance a death penalty sentence has queer and trans Americans worried for for the safety of those stuck in the Sunshine State. While the second bill is being framed as a response to the Parkland shooter's actions, the timing seems just a bit suspicious. Now, let me remind you that the first major anti-LGBTQ plus move made by DeSantis' administration was the Don't Say Gay law, which was accompanied by a smear campaign against queer teachers who were labeled as groomers if they simply admit that they're trans or married to someone of the same gender. If you have a picture of you and your spouse, well, sorry, you're exposing the kids to queer ideology and you are therefore a groomer. Now, at the same time, at the national level, we've seen right wingers adopt the same language when it comes to parents who seek out gender affirming care for their child with gender dysphoria. If you treat your kid with gender affirming care, well, you're also labeled as a child abuser, a groomer, or potentially even a pedophile. But that's the context that all of this is happening in. These laws aren't being proposed in a vacuum. They're coming in the midst of a massive nationwide campaign to label queer people as child abusers or threats to children. Think of the way that they talk about drag queens, for example. Now, let's look at the language, with that being said, being used in this bill that's being proposed about pedophiles, supposedly. As UC Santa Cruz PhD candidate Eli Ehrlich points out, more people should be discussing Florida's SB 1342, which uses vague language to allow the death penalty for parents and doctors that support trans kids. And as you can see, the text vaguely refers here to, quote, destroying innocence or injuring sexual organs of children, all language used to demonize parents and doctors who support gender affirming care for trans youth. Now, she also points to a graphic shared by Ron DeSantis months ago and adds genital surgery isn't being provided to 12 year olds, but the right doesn't care. They'll find some quote research that mentions puberty blockers or hormones change genitalia, which can actually happen and count it as a death penalty level injury. So they're claiming that these bills are are targeting pedophiles, but after they've demonized queer people for months and tried to associate them with groomers and pedophiles, and they've demonized LGBTQ plus people as threats to children, I think that queer people are right to be concerned that Florida is going to try to apply these laws to drag queens or parents with trans kids in an effort to try to kill them. Furthermore, after the shooting in Dallas by a trans person, the right made it their mission to use that as evidence that all trans people are violent. So what we're seeing here is new, vaguely written bills being proposed amid a nationwide demonization campaign against queer people. That right there is why the travel advisory was issued, because the right... I mean, it looks like they're gearing up for a genocide, and Florida is ground zero. So people are right to be concerned. So with that being said, Florida is no longer known for being the sunshine state and, and good vibes and, and a party location. It is a state where fascists have seized control and made it inhospitable to millions of people. And I'd be remiss to not point out the state party's attempts to ban their opposition party and force bloggers who criticize the executive to register with the state. The latter two proposals probably won't be codified into law, but the mere fact that they're even being floated gives you some insight into the mentality of the state Republican Party in Florida. They are explicitly authoritarian 
And that's not hyperbole. Anyone who cares about democracy or civil rights and civil liberties or just basic humanity should be horrified at what's happening in Florida. And so when you see every single thing that's being proposed, it is not alarmism to suggest that this is some way that they're trying to inadvertently demonize queer people. There's a reason why these laws are ran in such vague ways, right? So we should be worried about what's happening in Florida because Florida has led the way in anti-LGBTQ plus demonization, and now they're setting new standards when it comes to reproductive health care. And that is absolutely horrifying. So any businesses in Florida need to pull out? There needs to be a nationwide boycott of the state given how terrible things have gone because it'll only get worse. The situation will only continue to deteriorate if we just pretend as if this is some normal conservative administration. No, this is not business as usual in Florida. This is extremism, this is authoritarianism, this is fascism, and we are seeing it happen before our very eyes, and action needs to be taken to try to rein that in before it's too late.